All right, I'm gonna explain this real quick. Put this on for YouTube. The reason why I said magnetic uh, physics law is at the periodic table of elements, you will see a lot of magnetic. Let's get started. In this demonstration, you will see proof Isaac Newton is wrong about his three laws of motion in physics. To be proven by using Hooke's law of elasticity and the three magnetic laws of motion in physics. Now you're wondering why um, this stuff isn't magnetic. But if you look at uh, mathematics, you have a north and a south, a positive and negative, multiply, divide. And if you go right over there, you'll see a neutron, proton, and you'll know that that line right there represents the nucleus of an atomic structure which means everything on the periodic table element has a neutron and a proton and can be considered a form of magnetic or uh, the flow of electrons proved with Michael Faraday oh geez that's embarrassing to say that on camera but uh, what I'm saying is this is your measurement line and the periodic table of elements oh come on focus. Alright, well, I'm going to try to make this short and fast. Um, there's that. And you'll also notice in PEMDAS there isn't a radical sign. So that's what I'm saying PEMDAS over here. Uh, in PEMDAS, the radical sign, you know, that guy right there, the square root of stuff, for some reason isn't in PEMDAS. I wonder why. Now, these are the three laws side by side. This is a conversion from Newton's, uh, Newton, Newton's book that was from the Royal Society, written in Latin translation right here. And these are my challenges. I have those highlighted for a reason. Uh, the reason why those are highlighted because technically I can go in and just remove those. Newton tried putting his name on 100 grams of mass. explain that slide all right so now this you're probably wondering what it's what this explanation up here is I have the actual experiment and what it is is that when I drop the cradle from the certain positions in the graph which I'll jump down to the graph real quick this graph right here um, if you put Newton's cradle right here and you pull the cradle back and drop it from this slope of this line right here the ball will swing down and hit the cradle. And um, whoop, hold on. That's what I'm explaining is this, is that when I drop the cradle, it hit the pull ball and the pull ball rolled to about where the sundial is, which showed that the pull ball was in motion uh, before and after the initial experiment was conducted because earth rotates at uh, 330 or yeah 1600 kilometers per hour which is about 400 it matters where you're standing on earth if you're closer to the equator you're going faster and then you're closer to the north pole you're kind of rotating slower slower but the basic point is that is that the earth is in constant state of inertia and the point of rest cannot be proven in physics and this also applies on the International Space Station. The space station is in motion at five miles per second, and they cannot prove the point of rest on the International Space Station. Okay, this slide. This slide has Newton's cradle. According to Newton, equal and opposite force. Uh, when you go into the physics book, a larger amount of mass should uh, be able to have equal and opposite force or it won't displace the opposite force. So if this object was to impact that larger piece of mass, it won't do anything to it. Um, because what they said is when you drop the cradle, the cradle goes side to side, comes down, down, and down. Then it talks about kinetic energy in the physics book. And you go into the cradle and you physically try to measure a calorie transfer from here to here with the impacts. You'll notice that there's no calorie. And if you have zero calorie transfer of de uh, zero calorie, uh, 
if you don't have a measurable delta of calorie, you have zero joules, which means if you have zero joules, you have zero watts. Now, if you come over here and you listen to what I'm saying, I highlighted this because technically I can go up here and just remove Newton's name. Like I said earlier, uh, you can remove that and it'll still stand. The reason why I used Newtons of resistance because I was trying to explain the difference in between force and um, Newton's explanation of force and my explanation of force, or Hooke's law of elasticity's name, explanation of force, because technically you hook the spring mass system right here and accelerate the spring into Newton's cradle and you put that amount of mass on this side or resistance, it'll displace that resistance. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in over here so you can kind of see what those words say there and this is Hooke's law of elasticity down here with the spring mass system now you're gonna go in your physics book and it's not gonna have this explanation of the spring mass system but if you go to um, accelerometer principles in engineering and you're gonna notice that this is actually Hooke's law of elasticity right here not Newton's law and I'll show that formula multiple times in this. Those are the results of the experiment that was conducted from that. And you'll see that there's a decimal point, 006 kg is technically six grams. These values right here coincide with the value of Newton's cradle and the spring, the mass on the spring right here that accelerated into the Newton's cradle on the um, videos I have on YouTube. All right, so now you have, you'll notice that I flipped these two laws around. The reason why I demonstrated this and flipped those laws around is because you had to understand how an impact work before you can understand uh, acceleration. And that's how I understood it, and if you explain it this way, it makes more sense to people that it's actually seen it. This is supposed to be the uh, mass torsion bar experiment, and you'll notice that they divided to find force. That's kind of um, BS, because uh, in order to find force, you have to multiply. And that comes back up to this explanation up here, that multiplication is different than division. This is greater, this is less than. And you come back down here, and you see that this is acceleration, this is momentum. In order to find momentum, you have to divide, which then comes down to like m times v equals p of negative one or something. If you have the negative one in there, it kind of makes a whole bunch of uh, complicated stuff that comes down over to this. But this is supposed to be the law of acceleration, and Newton clearly says gravity is acceleration. Where over here, you can demonstrate this on the International Space Station where there is no gravity or microgravity, which proves that elasticity can be demonstrated for resistance, it can be used for acceleration, elasticity can be demonstrated for momentum and energy. There's a, there's a, I mean, if you go and look at elasticity, there's so many different types of springs that can demonstrate all different kinds of forms of physics where Newton is just completely wrong. And that is not even Newton's formula right there. That is the mass torsion bar experiment, and it was supposed to be based off Newton's explanation of acceleration. All right, those are the results from that previous experiment. You're gonna look right up over here, and even from 9.8 meters to 9.8 centimeters to 9.8 millimeters, the object, even at four centimeters, the object is only showing a law of Earth's momentum. Um, if you look over here, even at 160,000 uh, kilometers above Earth's atmosphere, we're talking way out in outer space, you can pull the spring back and release it and it still showed a law of acceleration at both 1G on the surface of the Earth and at zero gravity, zero forward slash microgravity in outer space. And whoop, my slides are out of order. Let me jump down here real quick. It's this slide. This slide um, <clears throat> shows the examples. And if you go look up Hooke's law, so Hooke and Newton got in a fight over gravity and uh, Hooke had a claim that Newton committed plagiarism. 
And when you go look at the mass of, or this explanation of this math, math formula, you'll see that Newton committed plagiarism right here. I'm gonna go ahead and come back up through all this real fancy trigonometry. So now I'm gonna explain this. You see how it says the fall of the fulcrum? You're gonna look at this quadrant of this graph for the fulcrum, and then the swing of the pendulum is gonna be this corner of the graph, and then a drop of momentum is gonna be in this. And when you go look at the, the momentum uh, formulas, it's gonna look almost exactly like that. And when you go look it up, you can derive uh, mv equals p from those equations right there. And you'll notice that gravity is actually Earth's velocity of momentum. It is not acceleration. Now this over here, you'll see that this triangle actually fits right there and that triangle fits right there. And then that red line is the slope of my release point. And I did, I could have did, I could have put it right there, but I kind of moved it in to get a more accurate measurement in the meters. And this right here is basically an algorithm. It shows you where to plot the points. And I'm gonna explain that in the next slide. This shows you, let me rotate it 90 degrees real quick. Uh, rotate clockwise. All right, so this is the algorithm of the math formula over here. And this is where and how to plug in the values from that graph chart. And these are all the actual measurements to measure it. Now you're gonna look right here. I was like, well, this doesn't go up 9.8, but if you look at this, it kind of swings down on a, a curve right here. That curve is 9.8 meters. I've already uh, done the calculations. Go ahead and you can look at the degrees of the angles are all correct. And this, these are the plotted values on this graph right here. Let's go ahead and rotate this back uh, counterclockwise. So you're gonna see these are the plotted, so these values are the plot, plotted values of this slope of this line right here. So this slope of this line is that right there. And then this is the trigonomic functions right here, rotate it back. I basically wrote a I wrote an algorithm for gravity, and then it comes down to this. So this is to understand the, the the swing of the pendulum, the fall of the fulcrum. They all coincide with gravity, with a single drop. The definition of gravity is to drop an object, and you'll notice it comes down to this value right here. And I put this in, and then it spits out four four centimeters down there. And you're probably wondering why does it say four centimeters down at the bottom. Well, this math formula is actually a clocking uh, math formula in operational amplifiers. It is also found how to uh, in clocking uh, electrons through a circuit. It is also clocking your RC time constant is very similar to this in electronics. In order to time something, this kind of breaks it down 1.1. 1 .1. So uh, this is the math formula. Then you're gonna notice in the next in the next slide, so your next available measurement is gonna be around four centimeters at 0.1 of a second. And check it out. Your next available uh, measurement is in this graph. Now this graph is the exact same graph except for it's in centimeters instead of meters. So this measures gravity down to centimeters and you're gonna notice that when you go to clock it, it's gonna be four centimeters at, at uh, 0.1 of a second. And then the algorithm over here is just a little bit different. Um, you'll notice that this is the slope of the line, it has the same slope on the other one, except for it's in a little bit of a different position. Um, those are the positions right here. So your values right here, if you look your X and Y, you put your X and a Y right there, and then you put that there and you'll notice it makes that slope right on one centimeter isn't that cool <laughs> that's really awesome how that turned out and then this is the same math formula for four centimeters let's go ahead and rotate it clockwise it's pretty much the exact same up here uh, except for right here you're going to notice it's squared instead of um, radical sign right there and you're going to notice that since we scaled it down to four centimeters we're gonna scale it back out. So this is what this comparison is right here. Um, let me scroll down, there we go. This sets them side by side. 
exact same triangle. So you can check the, the degree of the angle there. The degree of the angles are exactly the same. 33 at A, 33. C is 70, uh, I think that's 73.8, 73.8. The triangles are exactly the same, but this is in centimeters and that's in meters. And gravity is supposed to be 9.8 meters. So when you go and you go to scale and clock gravity down, it's gonna clock down to 0.1, uh, excuse me, these, when it scales down, so this math formula is designed to scale it down. It's gonna be 0.1 of a second, and then this math formula is designed to scale it up. That's what that's what that is. That's why it says scale graph out to measure gravity at 9.8 meters. So it takes it from there and then takes it out. That's what that is. And that's what that those measurements you're gonna notice that's square rooted and that's squared so if you come back all the way up back to the beginning up here to this thing you're gonna notice in order for something to get bigger it must multiply exponent in order for something to get smaller it must be a radical divide or subtract you'll notice we're scaling it down and the radical sign goes down to four centimeters. And then if we want to make it bigger and scale it back up, you square it, goes back up to one second. I don't know if you can see that. And the, the really crazy thing about this math formula, you're going to see mass and F, um, mass and force, kind of falls in where your R, uh, RC time constant, which is like F of C, which is um, frequency and capacitance. There's also uh, F of R, I think it was frequency and resistance. You're gonna notice that this, this is your timing um, math formula in electronics. And also you can time how fast it takes for an electron to go through a wire. And that is your next available measurement in gravity, which proves that A equals V is the vector in velocity and gravity is not the law of acceleration according to Isaac Newton. Newton is wrong. Robert Hooke could have performed this back in the day. So there it is. I'm going to go ahead and start back at the front and just kind of go through the slides one more time. This is proof. I did this at IITT Technical Institute back in 2013 it's when I took my physics class and I'm on recording calling bull on Isaac Newton. Turn your phone sideways. Turn your phone sideways. There you go, YouTube. Hook versus Newton. Finding fear in machines. <laughs> 